You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. This is the Thunder Quack Podcast. The official podcast of Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Where anything can happen. So strap yourselves in and hold on to your butts. It's Thunderquack time! Hello and welcome back to the Thunderquack podcast, the official podcast of Thunderquack.com, which you can get early every Tuesday over at Patreon.com slash Thunderquack, just like our Patreon producers, Brian Murawski and JJ Samuel do. Or you can wait and get it late every Friday on podcast services across the galaxy. I am one of your hosts, Michael Cohen. And I'm your other host, Amanda Conkin. And I, uh, we're, we're fried. We're at, yeah. we are out of stuff. That, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want to talk about WandaVision. It is really the only thing right now. I, I would say like the only new thing that I'm consuming at the moment that I think is, is worth talking about, but I want to save it. So I, uh, although I did, That's I was fair. just on a podcast or a podcast, a YouTube show, I guess. I don't know. I, I geeky waffle. Um, I did not this past week, but the week before I did, I, I did an appearance on their, uh, sort of round table discussion. Oh, yeah, I remember you like talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun talking about it, but, um, but I kind of, I kind of want to save the, the thunderquack conversation about it, uh, for, for our, our mcu sort of uh series recap um and then the other thing that's kind of going on within our circles uh is the the, it's it's just two negative things which is the whole uh i don't even want to say her name mandalorian she's been fired who cares i don't i don't want to talk about it anymore she's not our problem anymore and therefore we should all just forget that she exists uh, and yeah. let her just fade into obscurity and never say her name aloud ever again. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is the Justice League trailer that Zack Snyder dropped yesterday. <gasps> that just Mike! looks like Justice League. Why didn't you tell me that this is? I didn't watch it. You're like, oh, there's, there's nothing. nothing this because weekend. there's, like, Come on, there's really... nothing to talk about, Amanda. Okay. If, if I thought, if it got me uh, the least bit titillated, I would have been <laughs> on the phone uh, texting you and saying like, you've right, got to watch this. It fair. is just, look, I, I tweeted this last week and <laughs> I'm going to repeat it here. I hope everybody knows it's not going to be good. <laughs> I do remember you tweeting about that actually. <laughs> it's, it's not like, like it's, the best movie in the DCEU to this point is Birds of Prey. And it is so far from anything else that's been done. And all of this uh, uh, obnoxious male gaze, uh, explosions, slow-mo, everybody's wearing spiky armor, and everything is CG metal, um, except for the ladies who you can just see their underpants. I... Uh, it's, I'm just so tired of it. I'm so sick of the DCEU as it was. I want I want more Birds of Prey, which which actually uh, Journey Smollett was tweeting some stuff last week. Uh, it, one thing in particular that she tweeted that got me very excited was uh, that she's reading the Longbow Hunters. Oh, I, cool. Which is a Green Arrow story, right? Yeah. I think I made you read that, didn't I? Uh, you told me to read it yeah yes. did, did you I read it i don't know i don't remember okay. i don't think i did um i yeah uh which which is super exciting because that means that maybe possibly potentially that something's going to happen with with her as a uh, uh, black canary which would be which would be rad um and then and then the suicide squad the the james gunn one um i'm excited about that other than that like erase it all just burn it down I don't need any of it. I mean, um, I enjoyed it. Don't burn it down. Keep it for what it is, but feel free to change and do whatever you want to do in future is my two cents. I just, I just, it's so, to me at this point, 
Oh, that's the other thing. I guess I we're not going to talk about that. We are not going to get into that this week. Uh, get in, I, get into the, what? The Joss Whedon stuff. Oh, let's, yeah. That's the other thing. Man, what a bummer. Not. This is a great week yeah. for us to talk about being burnt out by the world, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, because because I think yeah, like I I don't think that either of us are in the right headspace to tackle these topics because they will just be, uh, uh raining on everybody's parade. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. I mean, like I think that I think that the majority of our listeners are probably going to be on the same page as us with these topics, but, um, but yeah, I I I don't like that like the whole Joss Whedon component. I it just it makes talking about justice league it makes talking about the dceu it makes uh that and and then like just like the how how awful batman v superman and justice league are it's just like it's retroactively ruined henry cavill as superman for me and like look i'm really? excited i'm wa- i'm gonna watch justice league because i'm excited for more of henry cavill as superman yeah and i will always be excited for that because i think that he's fantastic in that role I ju- it breaks my heart that they are giving him such utter garbage to work with. Uh, and I don't think that this version of Justice League is going to be any different. Uh, so there, like, I know that there are people out there who think that this is going to somehow fix that movie. And I just don't think... like They forget that Zack also gave us Batman v Superman. And, and don't get me wrong. It will be better than Joss Whedon's Justice League because Joss Whedon's Justice League is a compromised film. He came in, he used half of somebody else's stuff, and he finished the other half off with a bunch of garbage. And then (laughs) behind the scenes was treating people like trash. And when Gal Gadot was like, no, I won't be part of that joke where the Flash grabs my boobs. He was like, cool, we'll just have the stunt lady do it then. Um, it's you know the high road there right oh god (laughs) just like yeah there's no way that i can that i can watch justice league Zack snyder's justice league without thinking about that and without thinking of the the toxic release the snyder cut fandom that is just (laughs) the worst um so um, I don't know. I'm just keeping my eyes on the prize. We got uh, WandaVision, WandaVision every week. We've got Captain... I always want to say Captain America. Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, uh, coming right after that. And then that rolls right That trailer right looked in, cool. Yeah, that rolls right into Loki. And then that rolls right into the What If animated series that they're doing. The Marvel What If animated series. Which then rolls into Marvel, uh, Miss Marvel. And then into... Or, I don't know if it's Miss Marvel or Hawkeye that's first, but like all this year, all in 2021, we are getting WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, What If, Miss Marvel, and Hawkeye. All of that this year. Nice. Not to nice. mention, we might actually get an MCU film at some point this year. We've got Ryan the Last Dragon coming. We've got uh, the Book of Boba Fett starting in December. Bad Batch happens at some point, which is the new Star Wars end. They haven't thing. figured out exactly like, when yet? Like, they haven't announced it? Bad Batch doesn't have a release date yet, no. Oh, um, okay. Which I was anticipating it filling the same spot that... Um, that uh, uh, Clone Wars did last year, which uh, is not happening because it would already be airing by now. Uh, um, so yeah, yeah, I, I, but it's fine. I, I mean, like, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I can be patient. I've got this MCU stuff every week, which is nice. more than enough for me. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's lots of really great stuff coming, and we've got Godzilla versus Kong coming later this year. Oh like, yeah, there's good stuff watch- coming. But... I definitely meant to watch Godzilla King of Monsters this weekend, which leads in well to my tale of ennui from this. Yeah, weekend. go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll stop bitching what? about stuff. No, that it's I'm good. You talked about. about actual like useful things to be like. Here's things that are positive because right yeah. now for me, I'm just stuck in this world of feeling so unsatisfied with everything, and I feel like this happened. This is sort of like an early in the year type feeling for me anyways, but it's all just compounded with hmm. COVID. Um, I am I mean, we talk about this all the time, I, or at least I think I articulate this, that I don't leave my house at the best of times, right? And so like with 
a pandemic going on and me like being able to get stuff delivered to my house. Like I get like a hello fresh box every week. I, I leave the house maybe once a week for groceries. And like, that includes me like not really leaving my house to go for walks even like I'm just like so lethargic all the time because I'm working crazy hours and by the time I'm done at six o'clock it's dark out I don't want to go anywhere and I'm not a morning person like I don't wake up early to be like I'll start the day with a walk or some fresh air so I just wind up being this like hermit person but what the real bummer of it this weekend was that I was like trying to actually take time to relax. And I was so anxious on Saturday night and I have no idea why. Like I can't even articulate what specifically it was. I think it was just like a compound of just like all these things that were on my to-do list, but I'm anticipating Mm. all these problems that don't even exist yet. And I just, because I have nothing else to do that I'm just sitting here being like, Oh my gosh, like what can I be doing? And I'm feeling so unproductive, but I, then it bled into Sunday and on some, Oh no, no, this was all Saturday. Cause Sunday I actually watched the expanse, but on Saturday I tried watching. I, it has to be like eight different things that I would put on. I, first of all, I spent an hour just searching through Netflix to be like, what do I want to watch? I couldn't find anything. And then I went into my multiple, I have so many different ways that I get content. I pay for cable for heck sake, right? Like I have cable, I have Amazon Prime, I have Apple TV, I have um, everything. I have, oh my gosh, I have everything. I have I have um, Vicky, which is like all of the Korean content that I need to watch. Drama, yeah. And like, I just couldn't find anything. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll watch Godzilla, King of Monsters. Cause that's the second one. And I had just watched the, the first Godzilla. I was like, yeah. It's King I'll, of like, the Monsters, that. but Sorry. I just. Yeah, <laughs> Thank okay. you. For the important part of this conversation was that I added the the. But, it's a good movie. But by the time I was like, I was kind of like, okay, good. I'll feel like watching that. And I was like, but let's just see if there's anything that strikes me like more than that. And by the time I had flipped through the other stuff that was on my crave, I had lost the will to watch that. And then mm. I, I wound up turning on, what did I wind up? Oh yeah, Civil War, like um, uh, Captain America Civil War, because I hadn't seen it in forever. I tried watching that three times this weekend. Like I watched like five minute increments and then I was like, oh no, I just can't do it. And then I like went to bed and I was like, maybe I'll like, it'll be like my going to bed thing. And I like tried to watch on my phone. I was like, nope. And then the next day I was like, okay, well I started watching this yesterday. So I'm going to try it again. And I just couldn't. And I'm not reading any books right now. Oh, I did read a book. I read the fourth, no, fifth Bridgerton novel. But again, that was before the weekend hit. That was on Thursday. So mm. then come the weekend, I was just, wholly unproductive. I couldn't enjoy any content. And I don't know what's up, man. Like, what is that? My brain, I was just sitting here, just like bored out of my skull. Are you, you're you're back in Vancouver? I'm back in Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just, you're just on your own. Uh, I'm on my own. I think that's probably a big part of it. I mean, like you, you were up staying with your parents for a while. So yeah. You yeah, know, that's you get true. used to you get used to being in a house with other people and having human contact. Well, so particularly think, when you're not when you're not going out to work and and that sort of thing, right? Like, it, yeah, and um, I would always go out and like have a hot tub and like walk around the block, and and there there was like more regulation, like where there was always dinner at a certain time, and I didn't have to yeah. do anything to prepare the dinner, but it would always be ready, and like it just, I guess because for me, like eating has just fallen by the wayside in terms of like eating at appropriate meal times. And I just haven't wanted to cook my hello fresh boxes. Like I've been getting them and literally like even tonight, like I was so stressed out and we had to podcast and I was like, Oh my gosh, I only have a half an hour, but I hadn't finished this application that I needed to submit that I had all weekend to do. And I just didn't want to do anyways. And I was like, ugh, I'll just like, I could at least just throw the chicken in the, like, it's better than like not making it all. Like just like throw a bare piece of chicken and just eat the chicken raw not raw but like you know like plain <laughs> yeah but then i was like oh you might as well just make it it's so easy but then it took me like it took me the extra half hour where i messaged you i was like oh my dinner is not gonna be ready <laughs> but i just like it's just so much time and energy that my brain just like hurts like as i was making dinner tonight i was like this is the worst thing but i'm like i feel like such a big whiny baby because like my problems are just so not real prop like it's fine i will just order food 
because I can, I'm privileged and I can afford to do so. That's what I did yesterday when I didn't want to make food is I ordered myself a lovely Valentine's Day meal of fancy pizza and tiramisu, <laughs> which was great. But I didn't get around to it until nine o'clock at night because I just kept procrastinating all day. And then I had a meeting at like seven o'clock and I was like, oh, it'll be done at eight o'clock. It wasn't. It was done at nine o'clock. Ugh. Can I, can I, you can talk now. That was can, just no, like, can, can I, I, I have a, I have a theory for you. Okay. Um, based on one of the main reasons why people procrastinate, I, which usually procrastination is, is, I, in its simplest way, I, I don't want to do the thing. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> but procrastination as an adult, as opposed to when you're a teenager, procrastination is very easy. And it's like, I'm just going to go do a thing that's not that thing, you know, homework. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I'm just going to go watch a movie. Or I'm going to go hang out with my friends or I'm just going to go play video games for 16 hours straight without taking a break. Yeah. Um, it's super easy. But as an adult, when you become responsible, you you also have guilt that comes along with procrastination. Yes, so much guilt. And that guilt stops you from being able to enjoy anything at all. So I think, I think that what that that what is happening for you is that uh, as you are want to do, you've taken on too many responsi- responsibilities simultaneously. For for the for the listening audience that that might not I I know this as well as I do. What Amanda does is she puts a lot of irons in the fire. And because she's very good at what she does, all of those irons end up becoming things that she now has to deal with. Um, <laughs> that's, I've never most heard people, somebody put it that way before, but that's totally what happened. Most people put irons in the fire going like, well, whichever one of these is going to work is the one that I'll run with. Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, Amanda tends to, <laughs> tends to end up with all five irons uh, hot at the same time. And then has to juggle five uh, uh, red hot irons. Um, And uh, it is impossible to do that without getting horribly burned and scarred. So, (laughs) yeah, I I think that what you're experiencing right now is it sounds like you've got, to me, at least four projects. Um, And not to mention, you know, your uh, (laughs) day job, which is very similar to what those projects are. Because also in my day job, I'm doing like multiple things at my day job because I was like, oh, I could do extra yeah. things. So I think I think that you've just got way too much on your plate at the moment. And so relaxation is not an option in your brain. Because every like, time con- I'm relaxing, I'm like losing something. Yeah, I'm like losing yeah. the opportunity to actually yeah. be working or doing something else. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, like <sighs> similarly for me, it's so funny because I I – I was doing so much drawing up until Christmas and then obviously Christmas got busy and I wasn't doing as much drawing. And, uh, and then that thing happened with the, with, I, I sold that domain and Mm -hmm. got the money to buy an iPad pro and got it and was like, awesome. And I did like three drawings with it. (laughs) I was like, Oh, I got it. I have to, I have to get in a daily habit. I have to draw every day. I, until I like to get good with this new tool. Like it's no different than, than when I do that for Inktober. Yeah. And it's like, I said it, I go, okay, I'm going to draw every day. I have to, therefore when I mess up, I just have to power through it. Right. Right. Um, Like when I do a bad drawing, I either have to scrap it and start over or I just, I have to fix it. Um, And, and so I was like, I'm going to do the same thing. And I did, I did. I, I did the first drawing, which is just complete garbage. Which I, I just drew Poe Dameron. It's not very good because um, I was just trying to figure out how to use this new tool, Procreate. And then the next day, I did. Uh, I started sketching, and uh, and that sketch turned into to Scarlet Witch. This was like a couple weeks before. It was maybe like the week or two weeks before WandaVision started, and I. Uh, I guess like a week uh, and uh, and it ended up turning into like a full blown illustration. And I was super happy with it to the point that like I then immediately drew vision as well to go along with it. And then I have not been able to finish a single thing since. Oh, so wow. like I spent like twenty six hundred dollars on this iPad and accessories and whatever, because I got the 
the well, I can't remember what they call magic keyboard or whatever the hell it's called and the, mm-hmm. and the pencil. Right. So it's like, Oh, and Apple care and blah, 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 all that. So like all said and done, it was like $2,600. And, uh, and then, yeah, like I just, like, it's just basically sitting in the office. Like I have not been using it. And the other part of it is that work got super busy. So I don't have the time to like take breaks in the middle of the day and do some sketching and that sort of thing. So right. it's just like, it's, it's, it's driving me nuts because every time I look at it, I have this immense guilt about not using it. Um, and then that's it, its own blocker to getting in and drawing with it. Cause I'm just right. like, it's almost like shameful when I pick it up <laughs> um, <laughs> because I should be doing it more, but I'm not. And so it's like this whole vicious cycle that I, that I think, I think what will probably happen is I, I, in May, there is a monthly challenge. Uh, there are actually two monthly challenges that happen in May for drawing. Um, uh, mermaid, which is a, a little bit more of like a general one. I'm not going to do that because I have no interest in drawing mermaids, even uh, being subversive and drawing like rad shark dude mermaids or something. Um, I actually follow that hashtag on Instagram because it yeah. bring, it brought me so much joy last May where I was like, hey, this is mermaids. It's, fa- <laughs> it's fantastic. And I appreciate that art, but it's mm-hmm. not... It's not something that I think is going to drive me as opposed to the other one that is traditionally held in May, which is Iron May, where you just draw Iron Man stuff for a month. Interesting. Um, Which I think will be an interesting challenge for me because I don't draw a lot of mechanical stuff. Um, But I, I, I will, I will personally challenge myself and expand it out. Um, Not just to be Iron Man, but like, I will also include obviously Iron Spider spider-man in that i'll include uh uh war machine and uh you know like all of the sort of tertiary uh characters that come off of the character of iron man and there will be a lot of tony stark not fully in the suit uh as well right so um so i think like when when may rolls around i'll do that but may is two months away so uh i don't know i gotta i gotta get you motivated got time. before then but you got time. but uh yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those things. I and I think it's hard because when you're when you go go go, the tank gets empty, and uh, and sometimes you gotta like step back and refill the tank creatively. But yeah, right now I think that that's really hard because as much as there is plenty of content, I like I say like I feel like other than Wandavision there isn't really anything that's happening on a weekly basis right now that is really like creatively like fulfilling uh, uh, to consume. Right. Like, and, and I think like the whole binge culture of things I think has really ruined this. Like I, I think that Netflix is screwing up with a lot of their stuff by, by dumping it all at once. Because what happens is one of two things. Either I consume it all immediately. Right. Or I look at it and go, that's too much. It's too much. I'm not getting into that. Like, I I don't have time for that right now. So it's like on my list, if I go to my list, I know there's new episodes of Riverdale right now. Crystal and I aren't getting into that. We also have the added uh, wonderful convenience of screaming children. (laughs) <laughs> um, that, that Cassie is not sleeping right now. It's driving us nuts. Oh, what a bummer. Um, I mean, like, the new season, uh, not new season, last season of Supergirl dropped on Netflix, and I have not, I have not jumped into it, even though I'm halfway through that season. I just, like, I every time I look at it, I'm just like, Ugh, I just, I can't get through this. And I've got, like, three episodes of the last season of, um, legends of tomorrow and i just like i just can't i just right. can't now especially now that we don't have arrow to like keep us uh tied to that i'm just, yeah. it's just like eh, whatever um <laughs> so i've actually i've honestly been going back and watching old anime <laughs> really? right now because i because i don't have to there's no i've been watching so 
I'm watching Sailor Moon with the girls, uh, with Kara specifically. Cassie doesn't really care at this point. She likes it, but she doesn't really care. But Kara is in love with it right now. Like, she loves Sailor Moon, um, which is awesome because I love Sailor Moon and I, I watched it as a kid. So it's a it's yet another great thing that I get to pass on and enjoy again with her. And I've been having so much fun with it that, that um, I, I jumped back into the Funimation app I, I, their streaming service say I finished off Escaflone finally, which I started like forever ago back in the summer, I think. Um, so I finished that and then was looking at what else they had. And they have this series called Rama one half, which I uh, is like ancient. I, I'd have to look up when it actually started airing, but it's like, I think the manga is from, uh, is from like the eighties. And then I think that the series, the TV series, is from the 90s. Um, let's see. Manga. Uh, yeah, it started in 1987, and then the anime started in 1989. Um, Interesting. So it's so it it's it's definitely like of its time, and it's definitely not. Um, uh, what would be considered politically correct these days by a lot of standards, <laughs> but it is from an, uh, from a, a female creator, so uh, like it, it is it is a, a woman who wrote the stuff. So the troubling anime tropes are at least coming from like a very subversive um, sort of. I, I, it's not. I wouldn't consider it progressive. Maybe it was at the time. But uh, it's definitely like, I, uh, it's more romantic than it is about like the action stuff and the what you would call fan service is is um, used for comedy, I uh, uh, rather than just being like some of the other anime that I watched as a teenager that was very much just like, hey, look at these girls in skin tight spandex and you know like uh, basically like like leather outfits. I, uh, which was very much just like very male gaze like i uh, here are some sexy naked ladies for you to look at but they're not actually naked so you're fine um <laughs> Fair. where like ranma is so the it, have you ever heard of ranma no so it's completely new i think it probably will be completely foreign to most people the concept is that i the the there are two main characters ranma and akane and they've been like uh, they, their their fathers have arranged a marriage with the two of them they're mm. both martial arts nuts like they're both obsessed with martial arts um but ranma is like it's it's set in like that contemporary time so like the late 80s early 90s but um and akane lives in sort of like that modern world in japan in tokyo but Rama and his dad, like they travel all over the, all over Asia training. Like he's like, like, like it's like feudal Japan. Like, like, it, like the, they're, they're totally anachronistic. And there's so many anachronistic things in the, in the series that are like this, but like, so they, they go to China to train in this very specific place. And uh, there's all of these, uh, it's, I can't remember what it's called. I've got the wiki open. Maybe I can figure it out. But uh, I, it, it's like, it's a thousand of these like hot springs, and then like bamboo poles like sticking out of all of the hot springs, cool. and you and you hop up on the bamboo poles, and then like they fight uh, standing on top of the bamboo, huh. and they they go there to train, and they start training, and the guide is like trying to tell them like, hey, before you guys start, I should warn you about the cursed pools. And they're like, yeah, whatever. And they jump up and they start <laughs> fighting. And then immediately uh, Rama knocks his dad into one of the pools. And he's like, and the guide goes like, yeah, so that, um, that's the whatever it's called. Um, and it's a it's the the hot spring where I, 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 a panda fell in and tragically drowned. And now anybody who falls into that hot spring transforms into a panda um so whenever so whenever you get doused with cold water you turn into a panda and then you need to douse yourself with hot water in order to turn back to your regular form cute so that happens and it's like oh that's hilarious and then i 
Rama's dad immediately like leaps out of the pool and he's a giant panda and he knocks Rama into a pool where a young girl fell in and drowned. And so he transforms into a female version of himself. I, uh, and so this is, this, I've never heard of this before. It's, like, that's so it crazy. is one of my absolute favorite anime. Like it's in my top five, which is one of the reasons why I'm watching it again. Um, because it, like that's where a lot of the comedy comes from is that like Rama is always trying to kind of keep this a secret, but but like he, they come back from China and uh, and and Rama and Akane's dads are like, oh, you guys are going to be you guys are going to get married. Uh, you, you're, you're now engaged, like basically against what? their will. And they hate each other. <laughs> like they, So it is very much like like I. They hate each other, but they also kind of are immediately in love with one another. Like they're they're so perfect for each other, uh, and they absolutely one hundred percent deserve each other uh, in in like the most uh, uh, obnoxious way possible. Um, but but then like they kind of they kind of resent the whole situation, and therefore it's like anytime one of them is like, oh, I can't believe I I'm arranged to marry you the other one's like well i'm not happy about it either and then they get all mad at each other but it turns out that they actually do love each other right? <gasps> what twist like like it's so obvious like right from the beginning <laughs> yeah. that this is the way it's gonna go and that's the sexual tension of the entire series of these two high school kids that are arranged to be married when they're when they're older um and they have to live under one roof and 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 then the complication is is a that Ranma turns into a girl whenever he gets doused with cold water. So if it rains, he turns into a girl. Nice. Um, and they're trying to keep that a secret. And then also in all of his adventures across the world, he's made a lot of enemies and they show up to fight him. Like, awesome. like, like Dragon Ball, basically, right? Like Dragon Ball Z, where it's like, you're the strongest fighter in Japan. I'm here to defeat you and become the strongest fighter in Japan. And, uh, and, and so then, you know, like he's, he's got to fight people constantly, but then, you know, one of these guys shows up and it turns out that he followed them to that hot spring fell in. Now he turns into a little piglet every time he gets doused with cold water <laughs> and Cute. he falls in love with Akane. And so he's mad that Ranma is, and it's, it, it uh, it's just like, it's, it's martial arts teen drama uh and it's just it's awesome it's so good and i'm so happy to be back into it but it's one of those things where it's like this is not it's not accessible like you have to be an anime fan in order to care about this stuff i think that you have to you have to have some this isn't me gatekeeping this is me sort of just saying like i like i don't think people are gonna like it if they don't have these sort of um not even not like it's not about like having the knowledge it's almost like having the the like the predilection for it of like caring about japanese culture because if you don't understand how japanese high school works i there's going to be a lot of places where you're like why are they standing outside of their classroom holding buckets of water (laughs) <laughs> right like like because that's like it's a very common punishment and it's like you'll you'll get it it's not that it's not that you'd be like so confused that that you'd turn it off but but i just feel like there's a i guess it's like a culture shock thing of like right. it's so um more than like dragon ball z or uh or gundam or like sort of any of like the mainstream anime stuff it is so much about like Japanese high school culture. If you're not an anime fan, I think it's, right. you'd probably be watching it and going like, I don't really understand some of these dynamics. And then, and then added on top of that is the fact that it is in 2021. It is very much now a period story, right? right. Set in the late eighties, early nineties. So, um, <laughs> I think to to Gen Z, they would probably look at it and see a lot of these things as problematic. Uh, first and foremost, I think the the most egregious thing is that you see naked women in this a lot. Interesting. Which is a really troubling thing when those naked women are repeatedly stated to be 16 years old. Ooh. Um, Ooh, so problematic. It's, yeah, it's like, it's like, I uh, you uh this is not okay but it is most of the time it is a joke 
right? Yeah. Like it, like, like it's like, um, again, these are like, these are like super common anime tropes of like, uh, walking in on somebody when they're naked. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. and then, you know, like, like, like a male character will walk in on a pretty girl and see her naked and then like their nose will start bleeding. And when I say bleeding, I don't mean like a little drip of blood, but like faucets of blood will come out of their nostrils. Um, so like stuff like that, that are just like sort of old school anime tropes that, that I think are, um, they don't get, it doesn't get done that much these days. There's not a lot of anime that goes to that territory because it's obviously, not viewed in a positive light anymore, but it's one of those things where it's like, well, I mean, like, I I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater on this because it is actually a very funny, like very well written series. Um, and the, and that, that whole, all that stuff that I led with about like the, the teen drama dynamic of it, like, that's why you watch. And then there's, there is the element of it where I think, um, the 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 creator of the the manga which let me pull her name up um rumiko takahashi i think that she was very much because it was it was published in like like that same shonen uh format as something like dragon ball and dragon ball z right so i think that she was very much using that that format of like, and that's why it's got the Kung Fu martial arts angle to it. And that's why it has naked girls. Right. <laughs> cause it's like, cause those are things that keep that audience there at the time. Um, so I feel like those things are in there because it's just sort of like, well, the genre calls for it <laughs> basically. Right. Um, right. But, but in reality, what she wanted to, to like the story that she wanted to tell was about these sort of star-crossed lovers almost like like these right like the if, if they met in any other circumstance they'd probably be in love instantly but because <laughs> they're being forced into it they hate each other so it's like that dynamic and and i've never actually finished the series is one of the other things is that i've watched a lot of it but i watched How, a lot of it is it one of those crazy ones that's like 300 different episodes i think that there are i think that there are like seven or eight seasons of it um Gotcha. So, like, yeah, it's a uh, it, like here. I'll, I'll, I'll just bring it up. There are seven seasons. So, uh, how many episodes in total? Uh, yeah, a hundred and forty-three episodes, and then there are three films, and then there are. Here's another thing that non-anime watchers will not be familiar with, but OVA, which I, uh, which are basically like sort of one-off um, miniseries. Like, it might be like three or four episodes. Uh, and there are 12 of those. So that like, there's a, there's a lot of Ranma content. <laughs> they, like this was a very, very popular show. Um, but it's done. Like it's done now. So like, Oh all yeah. The content exists yeah. 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 I, yeah. I'm well, man, it looks like the last OVA was 2008. So that's actually, uh, that's very recent. <laughs> um, but before that, it kind of jumps from 1996 to 2008. So that's kind of weird. But um, I yeah, like I don't know how it ends. I have no idea because because when I was watching it initially, it was on VHS tapes that I would rent from a very specific <laughs> uh, uh, video game slash anime rental place in That's Penticton. Awesome. And me and my friend Bill would would I mean, like he was definitely way more into it than I was. And I think I, I guarantee you he owns all of this already. Um, and he's seen all of it, but he's the, he, Bill is the one who introduced me to a lot of the anime that I, that I'm a fan of. So he's cut, he was my, uh, he was my anime dealer. Uh, <laughs> I, nice. he got me hooked on the stuff. I, but it like, because it, because of the nature of it being like, Oh, here, like these, uh, these videotapes, it's like, well, whatever the store has is what I've seen. And right. they only went so far with it before they saw. I I would bet that like maybe season two or three, um, and a couple of the OVAs. Uh, and so I haven't really seen the the vast majority of the series, um, but it's all not all of it because I don't think the movies and the OVAs are on are on Funimation. But the seven seasons are all there, 
Um, so I'm going to try and make my way through it and watch all of it and see how it goes. But, uh, but yeah, it is definitely one of those things where it's like, I got to watch it when the girls aren't around. It's not like Sailor Moon where I can watch it with them and, um, and, and it's all basically fine. There have been a couple of touch and go moments with Sailor Moon though. Where there's like, because now it's like I mean, all yeah, the yeah, I believe that, I believe that. There's all it used to be that like we had the Deke, uh, which is a Canadian company that did all the dubs um, for YTV, uh, and that that North American audiences would have been familiar with from the early '90s. Right. But now they've gone back and they've redubbed everything with dubs that are more accurate to because the because the the '90s dubs were very like edited. Um, and, and a lot of the content was changed for a younger North American audience. So there's a lot of this, like, uh, innuendo and sexual suggestion stuff that's been taken out of it. And so when we watch it now, it's like every once in a while, they'll make a joke because Sailor Moon's not for, it wasn't written for kids. It was written for teenage girls. right? Right. So there, there's a lot of stuff in there. That's like, that's stuff for teenage girls, which is fine. Um, but for <laughs> a four-year-old, I'm like, mm, thankfully this is way over your head. <laughs> I, I, so I kind of, they, they'll say something and I basically all look at Cara to be like, did you get that? Did you catch that? <laughs> um, and, <laughs> but it, it does, she doesn't, I mean, right. I, yeah. A lot of stuff goes way over her head. Like we've been watching the Indiana Jones movies, <laughs> which is interesting. an interesting experiment yeah. with a four-year-old. Um, she loves them. We've just, we, so we've watched the first, like the original three. Um, and she loves them. Uh, wow. Even nice. scary parts and all, which I thought she would want to turn Raiders of the Lost Ark off part way through. Like we went into it. She asked to watch them. And I, I, cause, <laughs> cause the music came up on one of my playlists while we were driving in the car. The, I have the 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 music from the ride from the Disneyland ride, oh, uh, in one of my playlists, and I uh, and it came up, and she's like, "What is this?" And I was like, "Oh, it's Indiana Jones," and she wanted to know what it was, and I told her, and she she was like, "I want to watch that," and so we watched the first one, and I was like, "We'll see how this goes. I expect <laughs> that you'll want to turn this off. I don't know if you'll make it through the." the cold open (laughs) right like with the dead bodies on spikes and stuff um but she did she made it all the way through we made it all the way to the end to faces melting and exploding and she was just like that was good i want to watch the next one (laughs) i was like wow all right i i I let her know when the scary stuff's about to happen but yeah she's a her 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 media literacy i think is is well above her uh preschool level (laughs) Nice. everybody else is watching paw patrol and pj masks and she's like let's watch ninja turtles ghostbusters and like the ninja turtles movies ghostbusters and indiana jones um but yeah she she the 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 stuff that i think most people will be worried about with like the sexual innuendo stuff just goes right over her head just right. soars over it she doesn't understand a lick of it and it's that's what I expect, because I remember watching Ghostbusters and not. I mean, not I, yeah, there's so much of, stuff I didn't get as a yeah. kid for so many things. Yeah, Peter like, Peter Venkman's a, a straight up pervert <laughs> by today's <laughs> standard, and uh, I, I mean, like he's a sexual predator at the beginning of that movie, um, right. using his position as a as a uh, scientist. What I, I don't know if he's a if he teaches classes or whatever, but doing his experiments to score with girls, right? Uh, with with uh, co-eds uh, as as they would say um but none of that clocks for Kara. like she likes that they shoot lasers out of their proton packs and catch ghosts like that's right slimer is cute to her uh <laughs> which is hilarious because in the movies I mean, he is not cute um, um I, I mean i feel like he's Cute. yeah no I, yeah he's 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 I, ugly I cute, right I, yeah she, i get it he's the, the cutest of all of them if you the, had to choose one the best way that i can express Kara's personality when it comes to like the movies and stuff that we watch is the, like our relationship in that respect is exactly the same as uh ant-man and his daughter 
uh, in, oh, yeah, in okay. the MCU movies where like he shows up and he's he gives her the rabbit thing that's like I love you and it's like that uh, yeah. and she's like it's so ugly I love it um, that's <laughs> yes. that Kara is a lot like that nice um, which is funny because that because his daughter in that is Cassie that's Cassie Lang right oh, yeah. um, and obviously Cassie is named Cassie it's that's not entirely unrelated but it's not <laughs> that's not the Cassie that she's named after um who's the cassie yeah. that she's named after uh cassandra sandsmark the the second wonder girl because oh. uh, 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 the first wonder girl is donna troy who is actually wonder woman's sister younger sister right uh cool. but in the in the early 2000s i don't i'm not 100 percent sure when when the cassie wonder girl was introduced but um when I got back into comics, I, I, when, when, when Johnny started, when he basically opened Metropolis comics, um, I started reading teen Titans and she's introduced in that. And then she had her own standalone series for a while. And I have every issue of it. Cause it was, it was fantastic. It was a great series. Um, and with Kara being named after Supergirl, it was just as we were going through, names it was like well i like the name cassandra uh i like i like the name cassie and i uh, i uh, yeah it it just kind of we we're like well supergirl and wonder girl that makes sense it kind of stuck it just it seemed right but yeah right on i uh, i talked a lot for a real long stretch there as i explained what rama one half is to but i mean I, I that's good cared. i'm glad because i didn't have anything to talk about and i just like <laughs> bummed everybody out for the first little bit of everything so i would i would love for you to watch the first like three episodes of ranma and report back to everybody and say if i'm just a weirdo <laughs> uh, or not cause... i mean i feel like there's lots of people that probably watch it isn't it like a popular anime like I don't, it, I feel it, like... It, it is but like i don't know i think i think it's probably a lot more popular with the generation before us uh, um okay and that like i'm probably because i don't hear people talk about it a lot it's not like like our generation is very much the evangelion dragon ball z um Gundam Wing, like like I I I don't know what else. Inuyasha is another one that was big. With I don't like Inuyasha, but other people like it. Uh, and then getting into like sort of trailing off with like Full Metal Alchemist, Naruto, and uh, I, uh, Bleach stuff like that, which is sort Bleach. of where where I sort of trailed off with anime was with that stuff and now i'm kind of coming back to it. It, it and then the the generation after us is like they're all into my hero academia which is like the superhero one. one um i think i've heard yeah i've heard of that one yeah it's okay. huge it's probably the biggest one right now um which like i i've watched the first three episodes of like not this weekend last weekend but uh i yeah i it, i it it's i get why people like it like i can see why people would be into it i personally don't really like the the art style which is a big piece of anime for me like i have to like the art style in order to get into it but um uh, i don't know i'll probably power through and see if i can get into it or not but uh but yeah i don't know it's it is so like there's so much anime it becomes such a generational thing of like like i don't know I don't know that kids now are watching like teenagers now are watching Dragon Ball. I don't know oh, that they're wa even watching Naruto at this point. Like, I don't like, yeah, I, mean, that's... I, I can't like, would they though? Yeah. Interesting. I it, just, cause there's, there's, there's so much new content. It's like classic. Right? They would call it like um, classic anime or whatever. Oh, right? I, they would like... definitely look at Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z as like, oh, that's like that's like old school anime. Which like to me, that's not old school anime. That's like, that's the an like Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon. Like that is the anime that I grew up on as a little kid when it was right. being uh, adapted for us, right? Brought over here. Um. And I consider something like Ranma to be a little bit more old school, but even like, like I consider like Astro Boy 
<laughs> which is like the 1960s, right? And then like Lupin the Third, which is the 1970s. I consider that to be like old school That's anime. So yeah, I don't watch. Um, I mean, I don't watch. I don't watch stuff. And it's crazy. awesome. I mean, like that I mean, stuff I'm is sure great. Is. Yeah. Lupin the Third's one is is one of my favorite series as well. But yeah. I don't, do you have a favorite anime? You've watched some anime. It's isn't totally anime. foreign to you. Yeah, no, it's not totally foreign to me. I mean, I like Oren High School Host Club. Basically, it's got to be. I mean, it was one of my first animes, which is why yeah. I probably enjoy it. Um, And I like, like, I know it's not anime, but I feel like Avatar draws a lot from, like, anime aesthetic. And that's, I mean, it's a fun, like, anime to yeah. tune. It's, uh, so. I would say, like avatar the last airbender and Korra are not capital a anime but i would no. consider them anime adjacent for sure yeah they're, like they're they like... are in the genre of anime but they are yeah. not um because they're american productions it's a little bit of a gray area yeah um, um i haven't watched that much anime though i did watch fruits baskets it's fruits basket like or at least a yeah. little bit of it i don't think i finished watching that one um and then uh, there's some films that I like, like, uh, your voice, I want to say is what it was called or your, yeah. I think that's the one where they like are from different times or something. I don't know. And they like, it's, they like inhabit each other's bodies. Anyways, that was cool. You know, um, like, like, yeah, based on the things that you've just said that you have watched, I yeah. think that you might actually like Rama. Because it basically I mean, it kinda, sounds cute and fun. Like, I, yeah. It I'm, takes a lot of that stuff, and then it just adds the martial arts aspect onto it. Like, it's it sort of like, it puts on this weird layer of martial arts and fantasy um, <laughs> yeah. onto the the genre of, like, the sort of, like, the high school, um, uh, like, romantic story right um, that that is the reason why i can get into it because it's got that the the kung fu martial arts component to it nice but um as we wrap up our yeah. craziness i will say the one positive thing about the sort of like world in which my brain couldn't function this weekend i did procrastinate for a full hour and a half today cleaning my inbox of spam and i know that everybody was really concerned last weekend when i was talking <laughs> about all my spam so i thought yeah. i would give everybody an update that there's this little beautiful function where i can literally just mark all as red so that... i just went through all of my promotions and like i did get through like i had twenty thousand emails that were just like all spam in my promotions and i did get through like a good five thousand of them to just like delete them and actually like know that they were stuff that i could get rid of but then after 5,000 emails, I just decided to just unread all of the previous emails and then just make it so that I've already today unsubscribed from like four different things because I got the regular daily email and I'm like, hey, now this is coming to my regular inbox and I don't need it. So I'm going to clean it. So I'm feeling very like ready to face the world on all of my email fronts if, if ever I get the brain space to actually go forward and not stress out about things so <laughs> it's really i do feel it's kind it's really positive it's a really positive feeling to have this application that i just put in today like literally while we've been podcasting that i will find out about it april 1st which is literally like two days after my current project ends like the my yeah. like you know independent stuff that i'm doing in my day to day like i'm doing the crazy eights that's filming in in end of march so once that's done this new one could potentially start or I could have nothing to do and just relax a little bit for Easter. So I'll be very happy either way. I'll be excited to get funding to pursue an awesome creative yeah. thing that I, that I am excited about that. I did also put funding in for specifically website stuff. So Mike, I will be talking to you about that. Should I get it? <laughs> um, and then if I don't get it, I'll still feel like it'll be the universe telling me that I need to just chill. <laughs> and like take some time to be yeah. zen or, or oh, whatever sure if the universe tells you to chill you listen but if i tell you to chill you you just keep going correct that's fine that's fine correct take the universe's vice over mine i, I think i know I you better than the universe knows you but that's okay <laughs> okay <laughs> that's fair. Uh, Cool. I'm really excited that I'm going to get to use uh, Rama as the thumbnail for this episode. <laughs> that's the 
the the the highlight for me of this one. Nice. I have no idea what I'll title it, but uh, it's great. I love yeah. it. It's good. I, I cool. I think that's it. I think I think we're good. I think we did it. <sighs> I think that's that's my brain space that I can offer the world today. So congratulations, everybody. Yeah. Another episode. Thank you for joining us. Uh, look, they can't all be ranking pretty boys. All right. All right. <laughs> I know. As fun it's, as those are. You got to you got to have the valleys in order to appreciate the peaks. That's the <laughs> that's that's how I'm going to justify this. <laughs> Words episode. of wisdom. Words of wisdom if I ever heard them. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, everybody go go check out Rama one half. And and then tell me if I'm just a weird, uh, uh, nostalgic pervert. I, uh, because uh, <laughs> I ex- like if that's the if that's the verdict of the internet, then I accept that verdict. Um, I kind of like kind of like you accepting if this thing goes through or it doesn't go through. Then is the you universe know, telling you? Yeah, it's just the way it is. <laughs> um, and if the universe tells me that I am just a nostalgic pervert, then uh, I don't have to be ashamed of it. I just. I'm not going to lean into it or anything, but I can just, yeah, I just, I'll just realize that, you know, I, I'm just, I'm at, at 35, very quickly approaching 36. I, I just, I don't have the energy to change, you know, like I, (laughs) like this. No, I feel that. (laughs) Take it or leave it guys. This is who I am. (laughs) I, you know, it's just the way it goes. I, 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 cool. Uh, again, thank you everybody for listening. <laughs> That's a uh, this is a hell of a way to go out. I I and we'll we'll be back. Uh, will we be back next week? Did we do three weeks in a row already? I'm I'm not sure, but I will have a scheduling chat about making sure that we optimize stuff because I'm going to need to take a little bit of a break in March. So we might okay. like overload February so I can take some time in March to do maybe two consecutive weeks off or something. But we'll yeah make sure okay. people get the uh no i we've we've done we have done two weeks uh so the yeah so we'll be so back, back with a regular week. episode next week along with a bonus episode for me to catch up because we didn't put one out in january so look for both of those uh next week not this week i'm too tired but <laughs> uh but next week i uh, and uh yeah so we'll be back next week patreon bonus episode as well uh thanks for listening and we'll we'll see you then Stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands and be kind to one another. Follow the Thunderquack Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook by searching the Thunderquack Podcast. You can support us in three ways. First, by heading to the podcast service of your choice and leaving a rating and review. Second, by going to store.thunderquack.com to pick up some merch from your favorite podcasts. And last but not least, by heading to patreon.com slash thunderquack to kick in with your monthly pledge of support and get cool rewards like early access, ad-free episodes, and extended episodes. The Thunderquack Podcast is the official podcast of thunderquack.com. Head to thunderquack.com to discover more great podcasts.